What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I will be reviewing yet another beer from Hot Butcher for the World, and they're out of Chicago, Illinois, and this is a black parrot and an orangutan. So they're calling this one a Nelson Sauvin and Cashmere Hop Sour Triple IPA that comes in at 10% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is just under two months old, and I'm gonna give a huge thanks and shout out once again to Hot Butcher for hooking me up with this one, so big thanks to them. And this is the final beer that I'll be reviewing from the recent box of goodies they sent my way, and I saved this one specifically for last for a couple reasons. Number one, it is a uh, sour triple IPA, and I feel like this can last a little longer than some of uh, Hot Butcher's other uh, Hop Forward beers. And I'm just scared of this beer. So full disclosure, sour IPAs, not one of my favorite uh, styles, uh, especially when it's like a fruited sour IPA, because more often than not, the IPA portion of the show just totally lost. It just turns into like a fruited sour. Sometimes even regular sour IPAs, they just turn into like a regular sour. I prefer when the brewery labels them as like a dry hopped sour ale. I feel like those usually are hop four to some degree. But anyway, um, this is also a triple IPA. I've never had a triple uh, sour triple IPA. Like I just, I can't remember me ever having one. Maybe I have, but like that's kind of different. Then you have Nelson and Cashmere as the hops in this one. Now, I think I get what they're going for. I mean, Nelson has the, the white wine, the white grapes, the gooseberry. Cashmere, I've been getting a lot of lemon, lime, and like citrus goodness. So I feel like they're trying to accentuate the sour base, which usually has like, you know, lemon tartness, things like that. I don't know. Um, but I'm afraid for this one be just because like, I don't know. I, I, I hope I enjoy it, but here we are and we're going to try it and we'll see. I'm not going to look at the tasting notes again with the hot butcher beers going forward. No tasting notes. Just, uh, you know, try to figure out my own tasting notes and then we compare them at the end. Okay, big big crack. We're not going to pour it done. Like, we're going to pour this, like, halfway through. So, again, you know, it has the hot butcher kind of haze quality to it. We'll go like that. I'm not trying to get crazy. Plus, I want to get my nose in there just to figure out what we're smelling. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what I mean at all. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, deep orange color, murky turbid, the whole nine. A lot of haze. Uh, about a finger of this off-white creamy looking head. Yeah, looks, looks like a uh, triple IP of some sort. I'm hoping that the aroma is dynamite. We will see. Oh my lord, there's a lot of like sour citrus characters here. So I'm getting like an acidic, like lemon, almost lemon lime thing going on. I'm getting like a little bit of a, um, actually a decent amount of like a, uh, like a malt character, like a bready, almost slight like caramel thing going on. Hmm. Every time I like swirl it and go back though, it just kicks up that that like citrus and it's like a, a sour tart, like lemon lime kind of citrus note. There's a little bit of like this, that white wine, white grape character you get from Nelson, but it's not that big. And I don't think if they listed on the can that I would actually get it in the nose. Like it's, I think it's just like my mind is like, okay, there's Nelson in here. There's got to be white wine or white grapes or gooseberry. And I'm getting a little bit. A little bit of like a papaya or something like that. All right. So to be honest with you, it doesn't smell bad at all, but it smells okay. Like the citrus, the, the, the tart citrus character, that lemon lime is pretty good. But then I'm getting like this underlying like bready, like malt, like slight caramel malt sensation. And then you have like the white grapes and pineapple and like pop, 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 pop papaya on top of it, things like that, it feels disjointed in the nose. Like that sour IPA aspect doesn't go with the rest of the beer, but I could be wrong. And that's why we're going to taste it. So cheers, everybody. And thanks again to Hot Butcher. Wow. I did not anticipate that based on the nose. Hmm. Ooh. So for me, oh. So it's coming back to beer tube and taking the channel off a high, you know, it was on hiatus for a while and bringing it back. I haven't had too many fruited sours at this point. I haven't had too many sours in general. 
It must be because of the fact that my palate hasn't been acclimated to them over the past, you know, three or four, five, six months. But the sips of this is, there. it's like, this is like firmly sour for me, which I have only said a handful of times on my channel when doing sour beer reviews. Body this one's like medium, higher side of medium. Man, that sourness. It's appropriate for what I'm looking for in a triple IPA 10%. Uh, it's not, you know, full, it's not huge. And I like that. I've mentioned that before. I like that. The mouthfeel, this is a little bit more crisp and effervescent and, and carbonated than a lot of their mouthfeels where they're super soft and smooth and creamy. Not here. Some, a little bit of it, but more of that like spritzy vibe. The taste. I'm having a hard time deciphering whether or not I like this, just like based off the taste and the, the first like three or four sips I've taken. I'm not sure. Let me go one more, one more taste and then we'll start describing what I'm tasting because it's kind of weird. So right at the forefront, I'm hit with this huge lemon character. It is like, it is unmistakable that it's lemon. It's not lemon lime for me. It's not, you know, a different kind of citrus or a different kind of sourness. It's straight up lemon. And that carries throughout my entire palate. It is firmly, it finishes firmly sour with a decent acidity. The acidity isn't that bad, but it's like making the back of my like jaw tingle every single time and like my mouth pucker to some degree. So this is like full, for me, a firmly sour beer, which is again, rare for me to say. There's nuances of a white grape in here. Uh, about halfway through the palate, I'm hit with something that like a white grape skin more so than like the juicy grape itself. Because it's 10%, it's a sweeter beer. The underlying malt character is making like that lemon and the grape a little bit sweeter. It's not necessarily juicy, like a, like I said, like a juicy grape or like a juicy lemon. It's just making it sweeter. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say like it's like a lemon candy or like a grape candy or anything, but I could see like an aspect of that, but not really. It, it's just, it's like a sweeter kind of lemon. Like someone took lemon, like lemonade. Like it's kind of like lemonade. For me, this is 10% and as a sour 10% triple IPA, there's Nelson, there's cashmere. I was hoping for, I guess, more complexity, but I also thought this would drink more of like a triple IPA with a sour aspect as opposed to a sour beer with like a slight triple uh, IPA aspect. The one thing about this one, 10%, I can't tell you it's 10%. This, this drink's like it's seven. Like it's, they're hiding the alcohol, great. I guess the real question is, do I like it? It's solid. It's okay. Uh, yeah, it's solid. It's okay. It's it's not one of my, it's probably one of my least favorite hot butcher beers, just to be honest with you. And like I said, I try to be honest with all these hot butcher beers, and I'm always like, oh, I hope I get a beer from them that I don't really like. Well, this is a beer that I find solid and okay. It's not that I dislike this one, but it's just like, yeah, it's fine. I would want to share this beer with somebody. Like, I would want like eight ounces, maybe even like, like four to six, maybe share this with a couple people. At 16 ounces... I really don't want to finish this. Let, let me um, let me pour the rest. And the reason why I don't want to finish it is because that sour aspect is really starting to kick in. Now I'm starting to get a bit of heartburn. It doesn't feel that acidic on the palate, but it definitely does in 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 my esophagus into my stomach. Like it definitely feels acidic, and like you know I will have heartburn, and I'm starting to get a little bit of that. Okay, the pros of this one, I like that it hides the ABV at ten percent. I like the body being where it is is around the medium slightly above medium uh for something that's 10 percent. i like that the mouth feels different from a lot of their beers where it has more of like a crisp effervescent type of thing i like the uniqueness from a hot butcher beer for me what i don't like is that overt sourness that's kind of dominating the palate i like the lemon character to it but I just don't like that that huge sour blast that keeps on hitting me. And I like sour beers, but like this is like a one note. Like I said, it's a big sour component, a little bit of white grape, a little bit of underlying malt. But outside of that, not, not much more going on for me. Um, the finish is, like I said, slightly acidic. There's no bitterness to speak of. 
Um, there's like a semi-dry type of thing going on here. It's not like overly sweet or anything for, you know, a lot of triple IPAs can lean that way. But the fact that this is sour, like you don't get that crazy sweetness. Like I said, it's a solid okay beer uh, for me personally. I can see some people who especially love like lemon sour things. And uh, spoiler, when it comes to like lemon flavored anything, especially like candies or like let's say a lemon warhead, a warhead where you get the sweetness and after you get the huge blast of sourness, lemon is always at the bottom. Whether it's a Starburst, lemon last pick for me. Whether it's a warhead, lemon last pick for me. So this is overtly like lemon leaning for me. Like it's big, right? And I just don't enjoy that. Um, at the end of the day, though, like I can't sit here and say this is a bad beer because I think they kind of probably nailed what they're going for. It just doesn't work for me personally. Um, it's not bad, like I said, but it's just not one of my favorite hot butcher beers. So have to be honest with rating. And the best I can do on a black parrot and orangutan from um, hot butcher, Three, low 3.5 out of 5, low 3.4 out of 5. Just doesn't do it for me. It sucks, like I said. But it's cool at the same time. Um, I think Hot Butcher specifically, one of the few breweries that like supports beer tubing, and beer tubing is a very, very niche thing. Like, you know, a lot of breweries probably just discredit folks like myself, and they probably should, because like I'm just a random dude just talking about what I know, which isn't a whole lot, just giving my opinion. But the fact that like Hot Butcher goes out their way and sends me stuff, um, and wants to hear my opinion on it, that's awesome. But I also have to keep it uh, uh, 100. I got to be honest with you. And uh, this beer just doesn't do it for me. So 3.4 out of 5 is not like, this is not like a drain pour, but like this is the definition of a sharing beer. I want to share this with a couple other friends so we all get like five, five and a half ounces of it and that's it. And that's pretty much what I've drank so far. And I'd be fine with like, right now I'd be done. I'd be like, okay, that's cool. I had it, it was fine. But uh, 3.4 out of 5, uh, the, only, the only beer that I didn't really care for out of their last box. So uh, yeah, if you've seen this one, they also have, I think, a couple different um, a couple different uh, labels, like color-wise, I think there's a different one as well. Um, oh yeah, tasting notes. Again, I always do this when I show it at the end, and I forgot about tasting notes. Um, candied lemon. Yeah, so I mentioned like lemon candy, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say like this is like candy lemon. This is more like a straight sour, just straight on like lemonade or like sour lemon type of thing. Uh, white grapes, yeah, I got that slightly, like I talked about. Juicy tropical. In the nose, maybe, but in the taste, not really. So candy lemon, like 50%. White grapes, yeah. Juicy tropical, not really for me. Uh, yeah, so like I said, shout out to Hot Butcher. They try different things. A sour triple IPA. You know what? Cool fucking concept. For me, they kind of uh, swung and miss. Um, if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. I, I This is the thing. I want to know somebody out there who's had this one that really dug it. Like who who out there really like drank this one was like, oh, this is this is awesome because I'm sure there's a lot of people who enjoy this one. For me, it's just one of my least favorite beers from Hot Butcher. And you know, I've drank like 60 or 70 courtesy of Hot Butcher and the vast majority of them are delicious, but the vast majority are also not sour triple IPA. So um, 3.4 out of five is where I stand with this one. Price and availability, $19 a four pack for that, which, for a triple IPA, sour, all the whole nine, that's fine. And it's probably a good value or just like right in the, excuse me, wheelhouse of what you would pay for something like that. And availability, hot butcher, all over the place now. So if you live in the States, you probably can find hot butcher if you really want to, whether it's online or a local bottle shop. And even some places overseas in Europe are getting them. So um, yeah, as you can see, Whenever, and this has happened like the three or four times that I've had a hot butcher beer where like I, it's just not for me and I'm not a huge fan. I feel disappointed to some extent, but I also feel kind of like happy that there's beers from hot butcher that I don't like because I had a couple people mention like, oh, you get them for free. So of course you're going to say great things about them. And what they don't understand is hot butcher makes fucking delicious beer. I'm not just saying that because they send me shit. The first two beers I got from them were sent to me by a good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Jeff, aka No Jinx. And I said good shit about it because they were good beers. And yeah, I got them from Jeff, but the brewery didn't send them to me. A buddy did, and it would be fucking really good. So Hot Pusher makes awesome beer, but I've always said this, and I will always say this until the day I'm stop reviewing and drinking beer, which hopefully is never. Uh, not ever, not all breweries, no brewery, period, is going to make uh, beers that you enjoy 100%. There's going to be a couple beers in there that you're going to be like, this is not for me. And it's happened for me for other half, one of my favorite breweries. It's happened to me for Hot Butcher. At some point, you're going to get a uh, beer from a brewery that you really like that you're just going to say, 
yeah, it's just not for me. This is one of them. So once again, thanks to everybody hanging out for another beer review. Thanks to Hot Butcher for sending this one my way. Not a huge fan of it, but I appreciate everything they send my way. And I appreciate all of you for watching uh, because it's awesome. Interaction, people watching. I love the comments, the whole nine. I don't know. I'm starting to get feel a little buzz here. 10%. Anyway, I should shut it down. And I'm going to. So to the next one. Cheers.